So good afternoon everyone. As I was introduced, I am an eco-warrior. That's quite right, absolutely right I would say. And the journey that I'm going to uh, talk about today uh, is apart from the whole uh, activity of upcycling plastic waste for which Retarka is actually very quite well known for. Uh, where uh, we are upcycling plastic waste and making all kinds of things and all kinds of beautiful bags out of it and all kinds of products out of it. There is another story to it which I want to really talk about today uh, as a part of this uh, TEDx talk. And the story actually goes back a little bit into the past. I grew up in a small town called Silvasa. Uh, which is the capital of Dadra Nagar Haveli, which is a union territory in India. And I grew up there. It was a very small town, quite a quaint town. It was in the middle of a tribal area, lots of forest around, very few shops to go shopping. And when I, and I grew up in a middle class family, so whenever there used to be Diwali or our birthday or whatever, the closest city for us to go shopping was Mumbai. And because there were no other cities around so we used to travel to Mumbai our parents used to you know take me and my sister and used to go to all kinds of shops all kinds of malls and get whatever we want and it was a nice a happy life and I was like a proper typical shopper as I grew up I moved to Pune uh, Pune again is a very there is a lot of market all of us know there's so much of shopping around everywhere and wherever you see the boards of sale in shopping malls or in big big shops we end up going and shopping there, shop there right and i'm sure everybody can relate to me over here i never asked about the questions which i'm going to talk about later in my in my talk yeah right. okay. then for my further education i moved to chicago which is even way further into the shopping, uh, you know, shopping journey, I would say. So though I was studying sustainability and, you know, business in terms of corporate social responsibility and sustainability, I still was living very much in downtown Chicago. And there was the Magnificent Mile, there was the State Street and all those shopping areas flanked on both the sides, like what you see here, uh, where every evening, Though, how much ever I did not want to look here and there, I did see a few boards of sale here and there. And I ended up venturing into and shopping a little bit, being a little greedy like many of us are, or rather most of us are. But at that point in time, I was more in terms of, you know, thinking in terms of how I would work for environment conservation and all that. But I did not rather study a lot about the background story of what was happening with the material that I was buying, I was shopping. Yes, I was not throwing it away immediately. I still have my clothes from 20 years ago and I still fit into it great. But most of the most of the clothes that we all buy end up in the landfills. And the entire production process of how it's made, where it's coming from, where it's going to, nobody actually thinks about it. And that's what actually happened throughout this journey that towards the end of my life in uh, Chicago, in the US, I had anyways decided to move back to, to my home country, to India and work here on uh, environment and social development. Okay, so there were always these two aspects in the back of my mind. Environment conservation, I've always talked about in my earlier TED talk also, I had TEDx talk, I had also talked about that. I was always a kid who was um, speaking about um, wo world without plastic waste, about garbage, about how I used to f see the garbage lying around when I went trekking and camping and all of those things. But I never thought about this aspect of where all of these goods are coming from. So when I moved back to India, I had decided that for the first two, three years, I still want to figure out what I really want to do in my life. And there were some you know, some travels that I took in this uh, in this period. So I traveled uh, to certain places in the north, in Uttarakhand, in Himachal, uh, to Rajasthan, to Gujarat, to my hometown of Dadra Nagar Haveli. And what I started seeing 
was a very interesting system that was in our villages which we were never exposed to as kids all we were doing when we were kids is going and shopping in malls because that's what we saw on televisions and that's what we saw around us in the cities but what i started seeing when i was traveling especially in the villages was this entire world uh, of artisans which was obviously dwindling and declining uh, but have we all heard about this term called bara balutedar yeah so bara balutedar are 12 craftsmen or 12 artisans and what are they they are the potters the carpenters the you know goldsmiths the blacksmiths and obviously the weavers you know there are 12 different craftsmen and uh, i started understanding what goes behind in making these products so i always used to buy a matka from the market i did not know who the potter was maybe i must have seen him a little bit working on the side but that never caught my attention but now it had started catching my attention i went to rajasthan to gujarat i saw people weaving and that caught my attention oh, it takes such a long time to make a particular fabric or make a sari and i had never thought about that i always heard mamma wearing paithani and all those kind of sarees but i never thought about the background of where all of this was coming from and that's when when i was actually deciding to jump on to my next career or what i want to do i started actually uncovering this whole uh, you know the world of handicrafts and when the, the, the in the back of my mind i always knew that i want to work on the solving the problem of plastic waste but i did not know how because i was still in the town of silvasa and there is a lot of recycling industry around us but i did not ever get drawn to the typical recycling industry in which the plastic was taken melted and made into different products and transformed into different products i wanted to take a different route and then there the sort of connection started happening that there is this craft and there is the plastic waste what can be done to tie these up together and that's when i discovered i wouldn't say i invented because there were a lot of organizations who were working before us uh, in making this happen but i discovered that there was weaving that can happen with plastic waste and that's what then i jumped into uh, with recharka and you know that's when the actual um, the the whole name also talks about the same thing that it's a charka it's a it's the revival of charkha which from the past from the backgrounds of our um, you know civilization plus it during our freedom struggle the charkha was very much a part of every aspect of of our life of the rural life and that's when the entire um, you know the journey started of what i call recharkha and throughout this entire period of time there were periods when i was actually even um, th- thinking what am i going to buy so i started asking various questions to myself uh, to people around me and those questions actually led me into building the brand as well so the first question that i always ask now now that i have seen this entire thought process is first of all why right why do i want to buy why do i want to shop i had obviously become a quite a minimalistic by then so even the clothes that i wear i typically wear for many many years and don't shop much but then first question that i started bringing up to my to my mind was the why and there's a, obviously a very beautiful talk by simon sinek as well about the why but generally whatever we do it's especially in the field of sustainability the why is very important if there is a why you will start questioning in your mind whether first of all do i really need it first and there is of course need and want which all of us know about so whether i really need it if i don't need it then do i really want it and if i really want it then the other start questions start coming up so in the in these needs and wants the 50% of your you know wants are actually gone and you then go to the next step the next step is i i follow this step is how like how that particular thing is made right what process is used what uh, is there any pollutants that come out of it what are the materials that it is made from am i using something which is which is a non renewable material if i am using a non renewable material um, or rather can i buy something that is 
natural that is organic so that what and how comes into the picture and that's where even we at recharka have started formulating our processes our why is our hows our what's around it now when uh, when we when we look at our artisans and our artisan communities the how is very very sustainable usually the materials that were used were always very organic very natural of course plastic didn't exist then polyester didn't exist then so whatever materials they used were whatever is around them in the natural environment so the how was very very sustain the what was very sustainable but the how was also sustainable because the 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 resources that were used are what were also very minimalistic the, the electricity was not there the the machines that were used were very hand uh, driven hand made and that's what handcraft handicraft is all about even if there is a potter's wheel today it is a little mechanized but eventually it is using your hands and legs and feet and most importantly your beautiful mind in actually making all of that happen so that was the the second question that i kept asking or rather the third question that i asked why how and what the other what which is also important which i started figuring out was later in time as to what happens with the materials we are using okay so if i am making something out of waste plastic i also should start thinking about what happens at the end of its life cycle whether i can recycle it whether i can upcycle it if i'm using a natural material it's definitely much better because it's going to go into the environment and it might degrade it might just dissolve in the environment but if i'm using something that is non biodegradable that is non renewable then what happens with it so that's you know that that helped me build the brand as well in a very conscious manner then the fourth thing that uh, so in the what's i actually wanted some so these were some of the pictures of the how so we started using weaving as a technique of making uh, products from waste plastic so there was the handloom there was the charkha um, so here you see the charkhas the handlooms there is another very important aspect that is the what so the what is what we started thinking about plastic waste was always very like it was troubling me actually since childhood and i've told the story in my earlier tedx talk that like when i was a child and when i was actually growing up in the textbook somewhere i had read that plastic is not degradable but then what if it's not degradable then why are we using it and if we are using it what's going to happen next to it so though i myself stopped using plastic waste but everybody else was still using it though i kept kept you know crying and complaining about it still people kept on using it and it kept growing and growing and growing so today we are trying to of course spread that whole knowledge about how one can become waste free and live a waste free life but along with that also use it in the products that we make so different things that we started using there were cassette tapes that we found could be woven the plastic waste that could be found um, there was flex that we started using uh, there are you know interesting packets that you see on the right hand side of the slides waste flex banners also are a big problem and we started using those as well so you know those covering all of that even the the waste foam or the bubble wrap we started using those in making you know our products so that inside of the products also remains uh, upcycled or recycled so the this is where the what and how gets covered but very very importantly what also i wanted to talk about was the who we talked about the bara balutedar we talked about the artisans who have been throughout the history of our economy have been the biggest pillars of our economy where have they disappeared where have they gone who took over right it is the other part of the the history that took over so till a certain point in time uh, the artisans were very important and there was a very beautiful barter system in the villages in the towns where typically markets used to happen and if i was a potter and i was taking the pots and there was a farmer who was coming there the farmer could exchange pots with me and life was just very nice and maybe currency was not even needed but when those things started going away the only thing that remained was the market 
so where you get all your pots from now market where you get your cloth now from the market where you get your food now from the market so the entire system of the village uh, economy started dwindling down so that was an important part which i thought i wanted to talk about today um, and that also plays a very important role in our economy today um, and it it did help you know mold our uh, various structures in our economy in the specifically in the indian economy but i would not support the unfortunate part of those structures but the the better part was that every artisan every craftsman had some or the other work to do every person had some or the other work to do there was nobody who was unemployed at that point in time every family had some work to do why because there was a market for it why because we as shoppers did not go to the magnificent mile or to lakshmi road or to any other place to shop but we went to the artisans and we bought their things and that's what i am trying to you know speak about today is that the who is also extremely important we don't know where our products are coming from if you're going to a mall you're buying from some big brands but you do not know where the products are coming from where that market is or where is it made whether it is made in some sweat shop or it is made in some village by an artisan but there is a whole chain in between whether you know this fair price does not even reach the artisan and that's when me as a conscious shopper starts thinking about the who the who is important and that's the reason even at reach our car uh, we decided that we will work in rural areas train the women in rural areas specifically women yes because they run the family no matter what we do say today so there is still a very important aspect uh, which was sort of missing in the past sorry in the past it was being used and you know, women were always part of the economic growth but slowly as the industrial revolution started taking over women started falling behind in being an economic partner in in the growth but it it was not true it, they were always a part of the economic growth but publicly visibly uh, due to various reasons they were not made a part of the economic growth but because of the crafts because of the handicrafts that we are trying to bring back they are and they will be a part of the economic growth as well and that's what we are trying to do at recharka is rural women we are trying to bring them back into uh, mainstream economy at recharka as well as many other organizations which work in the field of arts and crafts and these were some beautiful designs which actually um, got us to understand that uh, what no matter what the material is of course it can be organic if not it can be recycled or upcycled but there could be some beautiful creativity that can come out of it and today's world when we are just um, you know in in a very uh, data operated just one second so me I, originally i am an it engineer so i've always worked in the past in front of a computer developing code developing some you know comp systems for somebody when when i started developing systems for my own company i started realizing that it's not just about the computer and the system there's so much more that goes into it and that's when the design started coming up so it's not just about the plastic waste and weaving it's also about the design the creativity because only when we make this will people adhere to it will people actually want to buy it and also pay a fair price for what they are buying so our work is basically to make people understand the story behind what we are buying and also on the other side me as a shopper wants to always ask the story behind every product that i am buying be it the t-shirt the shirt i'm wearing be it the shoes that i'm wearing be it the bag that i'm holding we and of course the food that is coming from so if we understand the various aspects of where all of this is coming together then we can really be conscious shoppers so we covered the why the what the how the who the where because we were we are making all of this in rural areas and that's where originally everything was made and when the rural economy stopped because of this entire industrial revolution what started happening was migration 
which is a big part of the problems that we are facing today in the cities because huge amounts of people traveled from villages to cities in search of work and that i called as distress migration it was not migration for a purpose for a cause and it was not migration by choice maybe many of us have migrated to the cities for choice but not everybody unfortunately many people have to migrate for distress migration so if there is employment available in the villages they might not have to migrate and this, it, the development will be more decentralized than what it is right now there will be less, less stress on resources the rivers will be clean or the air will be clean or if the development is decentralized and that's what we are talking about sustainable development so sustainable development is the holistic form of what we are talking about today which is entirely driven today fortunately or unfortunately because of the the consumer economy coming to the next on various things that we do various trainings that we provide to our um, weavers though these women were never weavers but they got to learn about weaving because of the work that we did with them and i feel that it was inherently it is inherently in every person but in this case it was something a craft that they were actually earning a livelihood out of so no matter what we work on if it provides livelihood and along with that if it also supports uh, the conservation of our planet conservation of the society then why not and for people to adhere to or understand what we are doing we also started taking tours to our craft center which is near pune where we invite um, students design students uh, school students or anybody who wants to come and see even families corporate employees who come who do the hands on because this is needed what i did i want everybody else to also experience i went to the rural areas i understood how things were made i saw that what i was buying was much like the things that i was seeing was much better than what i was buying and shopping in the market out there so i felt that it was important that everybody gets this experience that i did and so we opened up our unit for people to come visit to see so we have international students we have domestic students we have school children elders corporates everybody who come and experience the work that we do so this entire uh, piece that we call um, as as reach our car right now is a mixture of various things is a mixture of different aspects there is the environment aspects there is the social aspect and the most important which we are talking about today is the consumer aspect and like i grew from a, a typical you know shopper a, a middle class girl who went shopping with her family to mumbai and then to chicago and then came back and saw what was happening in the villages and transformed myself that's my appeal to all of you viewers that let's start asking story behind what we shop that is going to make the world a much more beautiful place than what it is right now so thank you very much